Brethren, pray for us, please. We covet, we need your prayers. We need the Lord's help. We need prayer. So please pray for us. Pray for your sister. Time's running out. You know, there are you select devils out there who are the enemies of our Lord, who know the truth, but try, but you live as if you're a devil, which you are, most of you are, uh, the enemies of our Lord, um, are devils, yes. But you're going to live your life as a devil with this background knowledge well on my deathbed i'll just repent and go to heaven when you've spent your entire life number one knowing the truth number two doing contrary to the truth with a facade in place the whole time you are pathetic you are worthy of abhorrence you really are you really are. Because, see, the ultimate form of salvation being in one's hand is, I can have my cake and eat it too. I can live like the devil. Oh, I'm about to die. Save my, you know, hey, you Mary, full of grapes. Blessed be the fruit of the loom. And then you get in. Okay. Um, the, they argue, is that possible? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We, we've talked about but, see, the thing of probability, and I'm not talking about the Jesuit doctrine of uh, probability either, you idiot. Okay? But, when you know the truth, the actual, scriptural, modus operandi, as it were, and you knowingly live and work contrary to that and then at the very end brazenly brazenly and pompously I must add think that you're going to suddenly get in after a life lived of causing division strife um, every single individual that has ever encompassed you in any way, shape, or form, sooner or later you start trouble with that individual, whoever it is. I, I, I hate to use this as an example, I, I, because, but it's, it's, it's meat. So many Christians are the lukewarmness of Christians who live with this wishy-washy, well, I can have my cake and eat it too, and then comes the end. And then comes the end. Now see, we know this. But with the distraction, with the visual stimuli, Yesterday I had a, a chance to speak with a dear brother who unfortunately I have not spoke with for quite some time. Uh, very quick story, you need to know this, um, Wabbit. Uh, recently, for the past couple of days, I've been getting strange text messages. And that's, that's weird. That's weird. Um, personally, I, I am very protective of giving out my number willy-nilly to anyone. I, I'm, you know, over the years, you know, been pretty decent about that. So how these, I mean, it's possible with the online kind of stuff, but past couple of days I've been getting these, you know, text messages that make no sense and are of a provocative nature. It's like, okay, yesterday a dear brother texted me from out of the blue, and unfortunately, and I, I, we've, we discussed this, 
I was um, harsh to him. When I get these weird text messages, you know, or emails from people, you know, like for example, a scammer, it's like, hello, dear, or hello, honey, or blah, 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 that kind of, that's a dead giveaway that uh, people don't normally talk like that, okay? Um, and when it comes to texting, text messages that I get from people who I perceive to be scammers, I'm not very nice to them. I'm not. And those of you brethren who uh, know how uh, my temper can get the better of me, I, I can be pretty harsh with some of these people. And a brother texted me last night, and I was a little harsh to him. I, I, I pop, we we're good. Everything's like, oh, he texted me. It's like, it's me. You know, it gave his name. It's like, oh, dude, <laughs> dude. But anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. A little rabbit trail. We know, we all know that inevitably we're, we're going to die. There's the knowing of it, but then there's the knowing relational of it. Okay, there are different types of knowing, you know that? With every funny thing. And this is why, and you're, you will see this, this is why you are a perfect example. You're a scoundrel devil, and I hate you. I do. With perfect hatred. You are the enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I hate you, because you hate my Lord. And everything that you have ever done in your life has been contrary to the Lord, and all the while you're parading around with a facade which has need of repair. You know, you used to be a decent actor, but now you just don't care. Because of old age. Now, the Lord had me to do a video a while ago, which was not well received, about elderly people. But this thing about scripture, and we're gonna we're gonna touch on this. Scripture suggests quite highly that the older and longer that one persists in devilment, the more difficult, especially in pronounced age, it will be for that individual to come back and come to the Lord on his terms. It is very possible. It is very possible. Yes, it is. The impossible is possible with God. However, you're banking on that when all the while knowing and daily living apart from, secretly, because people, you know, you use a facade, secretly living contrary, lying, uh, uh, causing division, strife. Everyone who you've ever met, sooner or later you have a problem with, except with your provincial. You know, that you think on your deathbed you're going to get in see there's a different there are different types of knowing people and when this is the foundation of all your knowing that 18 inches gets harder thinner 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 the older we get because what happens you get set in your way Proverbs 22. Enough of enough of that. Proverbs 22. Get your authorized version. Read with me. Keep an eye on me. Be a Berean. My mouth goes quicker than my brain. Get the scriptures. Don't sit there passively. Don't sit there with your hands uh, underneath your buttocks. And dear brother who I spake to yesterday... If you can give me a mailing address, and if the Lord give the means, I will send you a set of scriptures. Okay? Give me a mailing address. Okay? The Lord needs to provide the means. Okay? I got a box of scriptures. Okay? We're broke. <laughs> okay? We're broke. But I got a box of authorized versions. Okay? All right. Brother, you, you need a set of scriptures. Now go get one. But like I said, you... You get done, not on, not online. You get a hold of me. Uh, give me a mailing address. Lord willing, get you a set of scriptures. Okay, but anyway, Proverbs twenty-two. 
verses 3 on verse 6. A prudent. Prudence scripturally is tied in with wisdom. Wisdom. There are two wisdoms. The one that is from above and the one that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? And prudence linked with that. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. Hmm. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. There are so many people out there who can legitimately get the humility part. There are. That, that, that dear, dear um, young Scotsman, he had that part down. That dear, dear young Scotsman. We, I miss terribly. I love very much. But anyway, the ri uh, excuse me, by humility and, and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. See, salvation requires fear of the Lord. And this is why so many, this is why the enemy attacks it so much. Turning from yourself that you think you're a good person and that salvation is in your hands. You, 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 live, you live your life as a devil and then when you die you're going to say a few things, think a few things and you're in. You, you, that's your, it's your salvation in your hands and you're, you're, it's going, not going to work for you. Okay? Fear of the Lord is a requirement for the Lord to save you. And see, lost people can get that humility part but it's on a wrong premise give me something that i can do i can do better someone who the lord saves a saint it's like i can't do anything and you know these people will give lip service to that but their hearts are they're still they're still there they trust in their hearts Fear of the Lord is a requirement for the Lord to save you. So is turning from yourself and manning up or womaning up, as it were, and taking responsibility that not only did you hold the hammer, but you made sure that the nail was steady. Not only did you make sure it was steady, you because when you, what do you do with a hammer? The first whack is <clears throat> the hardest, isn't it? One hand wasn't enough, you had to go to the other. And because it's like I just put the feet together and drive the nail through. Oh, and didn't he need a mocking ornament where you put the crown of thorns on his head? You! Me. But see, the escapism is, well, so have everybody, so that gives you a exit, a cushion to when it comes to you dealing with yourself, scripturally, I might add, you can, well, we're all sinners, but deep down right there, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. The plight, the crux of every single, without exception, every single adherent to Free grace and easy believism. <laughs> a jerk and a crossdresser talked. <laughs> and you're parading it around. <laughs> a piece of work, man. Anyway, anyway. Thorns and snares are in the way of the Froward. And you look in scripture about a froward man and his mouth. Which. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to let my temper get the better. Thorns and snares. Uh, you do need to have at least a working knowledge of scripture with this. Um, you know how the Lord talks about the thorns and the snares. Choke the word. And it become unfruitful. 
And people who like to justify themselves say, well, that's talking about safe people. No, it's not. No, it's not. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Dispensational difference right there. Okay, big dispensational difference. See, we are not keeping our soul. That's out of our hands. Someone who lives their life as a devil or goes to church every day and justifies sin knowingly, knowingly, <laughs> but yet at the end you're just going to kiss and make up when you were there in the beginning under a false pretext or context, whatever. So, we're not the ones keeping our soul. You think that on your deathbed you're going to repent and go to heaven. You're keeping, your soul is in your hand, and guess what? It doesn't work that way today, Jack. With every pun intended there. <laughs> the sensationalism. I, I'm, I'm never, I'm never, I, I'm never, it never ceases to amaze me. Your sensationalistic bent that you have is quite disgusting. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. Ecclesiastes 4. Ecclesiastes 4, 13 on to verse 16. Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Mm. <laughs> For out of prison he cometh the rain making a deal with the Jesuit order and lying to people when uh, we're released. Oh, who's that? <clears throat> you got Mama Rome. I have the Father. Anyway, sorry. Anyway. For out of prison he cometh to reign, whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. Whose kingdom? You play with that. <laughs> you play with that. I considered all the living which walk under the sun with the second child that shall stand up in his stead and make them twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Yeah. There is no end of the people. Especially around China, as I hear. Even of all that have been before them. They also, look at this, that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also, and that's not a temple, surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Look at that verse. Train up a child in the way he should go. Okay? And then the generation that comes after a generation that lives for themselves, okay, what happens? Someone born is in his kingdom. What kingdom? Remember, saints, we're not building a kingdom. Who is? Satan. Mm. Mm. Whereas, verse 14, also he that is born in his kingdom, out of the one who comes out of prison to reign. <laughs> mm. Mm. See, verse 16 right there, you know, where it says, there is no end of all the people. The population does keep growing. Even of all that have been before them included, the ones that are supposed to be teaching the generation, so what have they taught them? Well, they also that, shall, that come after shall not rejoice in him. Rejoice in who? Number one, the ones who taught them, but number two and most important, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because look at it. Have you talked with some of these people, like some of the you know the younger kids, you know, who hate their father and mother? I could not fathom. Beg your pardon. 
I cannot fathom a daughter who came out from betwixt her mother's legs from the Matrix and not that stupid movie, okay? Who could call her mother a C word? Son! Sons who hate their fathers. And that's a reflection of not only that fleshly bond, but also the one that ought to be there to start with. Ecclesiastes 2. You know, when things like this, when certain things come to light, and our mortality here is reminded, you need to think about these things. I don't fret man, and you know what? I'm not afraid to die. I know I will be with the Lord. But see, the actual facing of it will last for just a moment. Like, for example, you know, another thing of which uh, from last night, you know, the, the, trade, uh, the trade towers, you know, the twin towers that the Jesuit order brought down at the behest, at the, that the Jesuit order brought down through the American government, I believe. Anyway, um, where the one plane went into the tower, people were jumping out of the trade center choosing to rather go kasplat than burn to death. And I remember watching the videos where it said when people, you know, they, 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 you jump out of there, you ain't going to feel anything if but for a second. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. Just like those, uh, those poor guys on that one sinking submarine, which would, is going to be a good video for... Uh, description box, beg your pardon, but you know, they died in a twinkling of an eye, an implosion. They, they, they didn't feel anything. I hope one of them was saved. We really don't know. Odds are they weren't, so imagine that. You're in a submarine and all of a sudden you blink and there's the one that you lived all your life contrary to, and you're looking at him. We know, but we don't. Unless you've had a taste of it. Even then, the actual going through it, that's, that's just like, hmm, said, you know, please, just make it quick. But anyway, Please ask these two, 12 on verse 17. And I turned myself to behold wisdom, fear of the Lord, and madness, the wisdom of this world, and folly. Fear of the Lord leads on to wisdom. It is wisdom. But it leads on a knowledge predicated on truth that comes from one source, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of truth. What is that spirit? and the perfect standard, the authorized version. But you, who have that wisdom of this quail, the wisdom of the Jesuits, okay? Madness and folly. For what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which hath been already done? Yeah, there is no new thing under the sun. Just a different way of putting it into a more ornate, colorful package. Okay, that's all. All right? Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly, as far as light excelleth darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. Your eyes are in your head. That means you can see where you're going. That's what that means. And I myself received also one event happeneth to them all. Death. Then I said in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool, look how that's worded. The fool says in his heart there is no God except themselves. <laughs> you 
Then said I in my heart, King Solomon, in his heart, as it happeneth to the fool, so it happeneth even to me. Why was I then more wise than I said in my heart? This is also vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, because there is no end of all the people. There's no end of all the people. People, that time moves on. It's not until we're up with the Lord, we're outside of time. I saw, unfortunately, a few videos yesterday. Atheists, for some reason, can't gravitate to understand that the time that we live in, the boundary of time as we know it, that the one who created it is outside of it. They, they, they can't. They, they, they don't. It's foolishness onto them. They can't gravitate to the fact that, okay, this is all created. Time, the uh, thermodynamics, uh, um, the table of elements, everything was crea created by the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He created all that. He's outside of it. Better than. And like I said, atheists can't. They don't want to, for one. And those who want to will inevitably, probably, Lord willing, come to the Lord on his terms and get saved. But most atheists don't want to understand that, number one, this is created, and number two, the Creator lives outside of it, or else he would be bound to the same boundaries of things that you and I are, and what God is worth worshiping. And that's where the atheist basically begins their thing, because they don't have eyes to see. Or they see. But they look at a leaf. And they think that evolved from millions and trillions of years. You're stupid. You're stupid. Look at your body. As flabby, as grotesque, or as fine chiseled as it may be. You have a spirit. You have a soul. And you have a body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. You are without excuse. Because God had sh has shewn it onto you that you're made in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Hmm. Hmm. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever. Seeing that which, seeing that which now is in the days to come, shall all be forgotten, period, yeah. I mean, of course, we, we, we remember certain people, like Einstein. We remember uh, events like the Titanic. Yes, yes, yes. But how many people who have died today, yesterday, that you and I don't know about? The Lord knows. The devil knows. We're, we're given to a select few. To remember. But when we go, that memory that we have of that said person, spirit's own body is what? Come on, it's gone. And how dieth the wise man, one who fears the, the Lord, as the fool, the one who says in his heart there is no God but himself. And depression. Because you and I want to get out of here. We don't want to be here. I wanted to leave yesterday. And my wife almost did. Therefore I hated life. Because the work that is wrought unto the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Ecclesiastes 7. Verses 2 under verse 6. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. 
for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. You need to deal with reality, or reality is going to deal with you. There is no stronger drug than reality. Um, Tom Waits said, um, uh, reality is for people who can't face drugs. Think about that. Think about that. Yeah. See, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and our inevitable, inevitable death and judgment before him, no matter who you are. Where is a different story? But no matter who you are, Mr. Dade Murphy, you disgusting individual. I give you credit that you acknowledge that you don't want. Well, then again, you don't even have a, you know, you've heard who the true Christ is, but you love yourself and sin more. So, but it, well, I give you credit for that. But that, that guy is absolutely disgusting. We are going to die. And the reality of our mortality, of our sagging sin suit, um, that um, the equipment breaks down with thermodynamics, then the devil comes along and flashes the world before your eyes in a moment of time with visual stimuli, and then the brain gets thinking, and then it's, you know these things cleave to you. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It will not cleave to me. The work of those that turn aside is a twofold thing. Those who totally go against it, but someone who just turns aside to see. And remember, though, Moses turned aside to see. What were you putting before your eyes? Oh, boy, that, that, uh, hey, brother, uh, could you, <laughs> that, 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 that's a, that would be a great video. Anyway, anyway. You need to deal with reality and what's on YouTube, what's on your cell phone, even what's outside your door with what the visual sim stimuli gives you isn't always reality, especially out there. But what you see isn't always, it is hardly real. Jesus Christ, your death, heaven or hell, you don't get more real than that. And see, you can play act with all your atheistic nonsense and say, you have no proof. Got a whole book full of it. You don't want it. Got a whole, I got, I've, dude, boy, I've got, so does every saint ought to, uh, I've got truth. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word of truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? He, Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. And guess what? Guess what? He lives within us, the saints. Okay? I know I got you. I've got proof. You don't want it. And I give credit to one who at least will say that. Even though they are disgusting, grotesque, abhorrent enemies of our Lord. Hey, at least he didn't try to hide it. <laughs> okay? This is a reality. Now, I don't bring this up to make you fret at all. No, but we can get kind of almost flippant. And then when you get a reminder, it's like, hey. That's why you need to be in this book every day. Because you need to be daily examining yourself. Because imagine those guys in, the, in that submarine that imploded. What if that didn't happen and they sunk to the bottom? I can't even imagine what that would be like. A millisecond death. Millisecond death. Quicker than a second. These people were went from smiling to be like, oh wow, it's all true. And see, when faced with the death of another, someone is what was wise. That brings it back to the center. And it also is a good reminder that brethren. Even if, you know, even if we get evicted, 
even if they shut everything off, this is not the be-all, end-all as the evolutionist and Christian will have you to believe. This isn't it. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the body, outside visual, the heart has made The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Mourning for sin. Mourning for sin. That does not mean that you have no joy. A lot of people, oh, you're just a fuddy dud. You have no idea the depth of sin. Because you justify it. You make a mock at sin. You fool. Using that rightly, fool. You are your own God. Okay? But the heart of fools, who say in their heart there is no God, is in the house of mirth. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Hey, at the end of the line, just say a little thing. Or, don't worry about it. You, you saved yourself by a thought. Okay, don't, well, don't worry. Maybe you shouldn't do that. No, but don't worry. Go on. Don't, don't, don't take it too. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> to this day, the most vile that I ever got in witnessing. The most vile. Uh, oh, when a grown man said to me, don't take the scriptures so seriously. Um, I, I, we won't even talk about how I reacted. Um, that man was terrified. <laughs> that man was terrified. <laughs> yeah. You know, tell me not to take this too seriously. That, that, that you don't say that. Don't you dare. <laughs> uh, anyway, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for men to hear the song of fools. Think about that. Open rebuke is better than secret love. A brother or sister who truly loves you Brad, come here. Let's let's talk. Hey, Brad. You know you say in scripture. Let's okay. Let's let's go. Let me show you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Song of fools. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Okay. Repentance is a work. Prayer is a work. Calling is a work. Don't need to fear the Lord. That. that, that Song of fools. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. You people are disgusting. Song of fools. Say not thou. Oh, excuse me. Better is the end of a thing. Wait, where, 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 where we read the verse, uh, verse 6. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> Verse 4, sorry. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. To hear, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot burning, so is the laughter of the fool. This is also vanity. Oh, now you think about that. Crackling of thorns. Thorns that choke you. Crackling. Uh, have you ever put a, a, like a rose thorns or whatever, those like talons, and then you hear them pew, pew, in a big fire? You get the inference, the pot, you, the crackling of thorns, burning thorns, and this world pa is passing away to be burned in fervent heat. What does the Lord say in that verse? What does he say in that verse? This is also vanity. And what is it tied into? The laughter of the fool. Not yet, brother, about the laughter thing. You know? By the way, find me funny and humor in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Put it in the comment section. Look at that verse. 
Verse 6. See what's being said there? For our instruction and righteousness. In the pot, the thorns to choke you. It's going to burn. And you're laughing all the way that you're causing so much trouble. It's vanity, man. You're going to hell. Ecclesiastes 8. Verses 6 on to verse 13. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. Kill me, I die, I'm going home. How the death will be, just make it quick. Not agonize. Guys in the submarine, millisecond. You catapult yourself, those poor people who went to uh, judgment after leaping out of the trade center, willing rather to uh, catapult and go splat than to burn in a building. Mm. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? Time and judgment. When it shall be, you don't know when you're going to die. You know, you might be an idiot and decide to eat a bullet. Uh, if you're lost and you do that, then you, good luck. But see, a saint can do that, but imagine... A saved, sealed saint. You know how it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, if any man um, destroyed it. Hold your place here. Let's look at that. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Well, get a set of scriptures. Uh, okay, for the saint, for, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. You're a saint and you decide stupidly to eat a bullet or to drink some uh, Drano or whatever because of the light afflictions. I, okay, I understand the light afflictions, buddy. But see, as a saint, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit, capital S, of God dwelleth in you? If any man, including yourself, well, I'm a woman, you're of mankind, shut up. I say that to you in love. Don't get that confused. Woman, you came of man. Yes, man is of the woman because of birth, yes, but in the beginning, you came of man. Sisters know that. Some sisters need to be reminded of that. Okay? And us men don't. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, I had to okay okay <laughs> all right while all the while they can find all the fault they want in us man it's like you know Brad you're being stupid yes dear <laughs> or, or or um or or Brad you're acting like an infidel what <laughs> what <laughs> If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which ye are. Uh, if you're a saint today and you decide to eat a bullet, you will, and you're actually saved, sealed. Once saved, always saved. Uh, you can't lose what isn't yours to lose. But imagine getting, and see, a lot of these devils will do this. But see, they have no fear of the Lord. And the honor of the Lord means nothing to them because they're not his anyway. How would you like to be the guy in heaven who the Father knows is there but doesn't want anything to do with you even though you're in heaven? Why? Because either he had to kill you because you wouldn't give up that one pesky little sin of yours or you just lived as a devil or you decided to eat a bullet. The Lord be ashamed of you for eternity while you're up. Well, I'm, at least I'm with him. See, that, that, that is a giveaway to someone I think doesn't have the Spirit of God within them. Okay? Truly. A saint in a time of duress could say that. 
But the, the minute yeah, as a saint you may say something like that, that Lord's going to get it. That Lord of ours, he's going to get you on that ground. He's going to whoop the snot. Ain't that right, brother? Come on. Ain't that right, Brad? But see, if someone wants to, has that mentality, well, at least I'm going to be up there. The Lord, that's usually a sign that some, the Lord means nothing to that individual. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. False converts, fake, Mr. Fig, they are the ones who fall away. And that's the closest I will ever get. To the reference. That's what I mean. You're irritating me. <laughs> you are very, you're irritating me. But anyway, sorry. Verse 8. For there is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Have no power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Okay? Today, you come to him on his terms, he saves you, you're sealed. Okay? In this dispensation, under the law, there was no eternal security. Okay? No eternal security. And even with eternal security today, we have no power over the Lord. And notice... That is a lowercase s there, one that is imparted. Keep that in mind. There's a dispensational difference there. Okay? Neither hath he power in the day of death. You're, you know, there are guys out there who will have plastic surgeries, who will try to live on the finest uh, diets. Sooner or later, you are going to die. You're going to die. And you know what? I talk about this because part of this calling is to strengthen the brethren, but there are a lot of false converts who actually will watch these things that the Lord will do here. Um, need to be aware of this because you know. But that 18 inches down, son, daughter, girl, And there is no discharge in that war. <laughs> yeah. Neither shall wickedness. I saved myself by my own belief. I am a member of the Roman Catholic Church. I'm an elect. I can say something. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. All this have I seen. And applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And sin will have rule, uh, and you will rule over him. Uh, that says that in, brother, will you help me? Uh, where it says in Genesis about um, his sin will rule, you will rule over your sin. Hmm? Verse 10. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy, heard it every day, heard it every day. You go to your church, you watch the videos, you hear it every day, but yet you're buried. Good, we're supposed to be buried, and wicked buried. Hmm. And they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. These Christians that give all these, you know, the, like, like our Lord addressed, you know, how the, the Pharisees out of their abundance cast into the treasury, but the widow who had only two mites threw everything she had into that. Dispensation, yes, but the point is, I'm immediately reminded of that jerk Hiles guy who had an obligation to leave what he had uh, for the care of his children, but he gave it back to Mother Rome. 
you know, is uh, independent fundamental Baptist. Hey, you're an IFB guy. Not all of you are like Jer Kyles or Stephen Anderson. Uh, no, 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 no. But he did kind of smear your name. Just like uh, there are some King James Bible-believing Christians that are uh, smearing the name of those of us saints who believe the scriptures. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. I got time. Today I'm doing good. When I'm on the hospital bed, then I'll repent and I'll get in. You are in for the biggest shock of your life, you arrogant pompous. I won't do that. See, I know you're a glory hound. You, you like the whole world revolves around you, but you're a perfect example, too, of what this is addressing. You're a perfect example of the one who goes too far who can't come back. You know, perfect example. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, and you, you don't even know what that is. But anyway, but I got time. You don't know. Could happen after I turn this off. Could happen tonight. Could happen now. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Christians don't fear God. That there are some who do, who are actually saints who Want to still call yourself a Christian? I don't understand that. That's not going to put you in hell, but it's like, okay, that's between you and the Lord. You know, you're you're my actual brother. You're my brother, and you want to, and you're going to defend the the term Christian. Oh, that's good luck. Okay, that that's fine. Hey, go go ahead, knock yourself out. Okay, that's between you and the Lord. Okay, you know, when we're up there, it won't matter. Okay, right? But, uh, yeah, anyway, anyway, little wabbit there, okay? Little wabbit there. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Self-explanatory. Christians don't fear God. They fear man. They fear their church or their wife. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked, as we're seeing in America. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. Wicked devils who get fed by your good deed or whatever, something like that, you know. He maketh his sun to shine on the evil and the good. I said that this is also vanity. We're actually reading to verse 15. Okay? Then I commended mirth. Why does he commend mirth? For someone who doesn't fear the Lord and have made their choice and justify themselves along the way? Light it up, man. Go to the pub and get snookered every night. Then you, you eat the cookie, drink the cookie. Live it up. This is what I say to people who I encounter. I say, you know, man, I hope you're having your best life now. I really do. You wicked devils. You know? <laughs> Cross-dressing Calvinists and a jerk. Together. And one thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hope those guys are having their best lives now. I really do. I really do. That's... Essentially what Solomon is saying here. And he could say it with every legitimacy because he was one of the wealthiest men that ever lived. He didn't have it in this or in Bitcoin. He had it in physical, physical substance. Wealth, gold, and ivory, and silver, which was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. Talk about prosperity. Okay? But yeah, then I commended mirth. Okay? You don't fear God. You do evil a hundred times. Verse 12. Verse 13, you're reminded 
It's not going to go good with you in the end that you're not thinking of, but you think you can escape having your cake and eat it too, and then at the end you're just going to think something, say something, and you're going to get in. The, the most stupid, but it's self-gratifying and self-justifying now. And we have already shown evidence, the older you get, the harder it gets. The older you get, the more set in your ways, the longer you go in defiance of the Lord, the harder it gets. Impossible? No. Probable? <laughs> no, it's not impossible. Is it probable? <laughs> that? No. No. The long scripture, we've given some evidence. There's more, but for the, for the sake of this video... Um, the evidence suggests that uh, the older you get, the harder it gets. Period. You get set in your ways. An old and foolish king who says in his heart, behaving as if he says in his heart, there is no God. And to this, verse 15, then I commended mirth, because a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and be merry. For that shall abide with him of his labor, the days of his life, which God giveth him under the sun. Live your, life, live your best life now, devil. Live to the fullest extent of gratifying the sin suit that you love so much. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Ex be extravagant in your self-glorification. Do it. Do what you want to do when you want to do it. The I wills, five of them. Kind of like Tony Robbins, you know, success is what I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Five, okay, devil scum that he is. Okay, and I'd say that to his face so he could pummel me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but yeah, Solomon is like, you don't fear God. You don't want to even hear it. You're scooting along. Enjoy your life, man. Have your best life now. Have your best life now. Live it up. Live it up. Go for it. You're, you know, you've gone past the point of no return. You won't come back. You don't want to, but you think you can at your deathbed. Okay? Live, live your life, man. Live it up. Live it up. Especially someone who's heard the truth and rejects it. You're going to do what you're going to do. Live it up. Live it. Live it. I hope. I hope your father, the devil, gives you the best. I really do. I really mean that when I say that to you wicked devils. I really mean that. I do. I do. For even for that disgusting cross-dressing Calvinist and jerk who needs to be smacked. Okay? I hope, I hope your father, the devil, who you serve, is giving you the very best that he has for you. I really do. I mean that. Romans 14, verses 11 on to verse 12. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. And you can cross-reference. That's even in their reference, I'm sure, in Philippians chapter 2. Okay, we're not going to go there. So then, and so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Now, verse 12 is a general statement, but you've got to remember the context of verse 14. But Paul is saying, everyone, okay, we saints, those saved in this dispensation, when we die or get caught up, our judgment is at the judgment seat of Christ. Our works are going to be tried for our rewards. We're once saved, always saved. We're in, okay? And God forbid if you've justified yourself saying, well, at least I'm going to be in there. Yeah, but always be, the Lord will be ashamed of you for eternity. And that's showing, that shows something. That shows something. Uh -huh. Where's your heart? Okay. But verse 12 is a generalized statement because, because Hebrews 9, Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. And as it is appointed unto men, once to die. But after this, the judgment. 
Our judgment is at the judgment seat of Christ. Save people. You lost people, your inevitable judgment will be at the great white throne. Okay? The judgment seat of Christ is only for saved people. Okay? From this dispensation. Okay? Okay? Because with the exception of the time under the Old Testament and this dispensation and eternity, of course, where no time is, is uh, even the kingdom of heaven is a thousand years. It's been over uh, 2,000 years, I believe, at least, since the Lord died, buried, and rose again, the, uh, from, uh, according to the scriptures, shed his blood on the cross and went up to heaven. And the Old Testament was a couple thousand years as well. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is a thousand years. Okay? All right? All right? So, the judgment seat of Christ is specifically for the saints of this dispensation. And the one that I believe... The saints from like under the law and whatnot, because we're going to look at this of Abraham's bosom. They, you know, the Lord made the way. Okay, guys, let's go. And they went to heaven. We've talked about that. Okay? Talked about that. But Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this to judgment, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Where well, are you going to do it, though? So Christ was once once offered Catholic to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Remembering the dispensational thing because the book of Hebrews is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Revelation chapter 3, 3. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, but as we already looked at, most of you don't want to acknowledge it or even accede to it. Remember, therefore, how thou hast heard, received, hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. And you think you're going to do that with a life lived in ex excess, paid for by the Vatican, glorifying yourself. And on your you, you're an idiot. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. You have no idea. It could happen just like that. Like as on a sinking submarine. As someone in their sleep will all of a sudden go in their sleep. The catapult out of a building. On the way down, but the minute you hit, bear, I, I doubt anyone who jumped from the Trade Center, um, I doubt they felt anything, maybe if just a second. Just a second. Especially, uh, there were talks of um, uh, the video about where people watched them hit head first from the, wow, you're definitely, this goes to splat, you know, you know. It could happen at any moment. And as a saint, we don't fear the moment. What we have reservation is, is how it's going to be, and if the feeling thing and whatnot, okay. Um, I, I truly believe a woman has an advantage over us men because they have uh, a woman that has birthed children. Uh, we can't imagine that. I can, I don't want to. Okay? <clears throat> but what happens? Christianity with the self glorification and gratification. The yea hath God said, just believe and receive. This is a work, that is a work. I, I went to communion. I'm elect. What? Those are scapegoats for someone to justify themselves. And then when you get a wake up call, what do you do? What does most man do? Isaiah 22, 12 on verse 14. And in that day, in that day, and in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping 
and mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. Different dispensation, incredible instruction in righteousness. You find out that what you're doing is wrong, you know that it's wrong. Well, all things are lawful for me. See, the idolatry, the sin in and of itself is just a mere reflection of you. Have you ever thought about it like that? The idol is a reflection of you wanting to serve yourself and justify yourself and do what you want. But so is your sin. As if idolatry isn't sin. But I'm not saying that. You, you know better than that. Okay? And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Again, all you devils out there, I hope you are, I truly do. I truly do. I hope you win the lottery. I hope you get your, your fancy cars and your best clothes. I hope you got the best electronics. I hope you don't have to worry about being evicted because you can't pay your rent. I hope you don't have to worry about that. I hope you got food galore. I, I hope those cigarettes are the finest ones you can get. I hope the beer, that, the ale that you drink is made of the choicest stuff. I hope that you live off the finest. I really do. I really, really, really do. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. There are those of you who have your addictions. I love you. Um, some of you, I fear that you will not re get rid of that stuff until the day they put you in a bag or a cardboard box and put you in the ground. I... I shudder to think that. That doesn't mean I don't love any brother or sister in such a case any less. It's just having something that precious that I don't want to get rid of. And for some, yes, it's a can't, but if you really want to, okay, you're, you're not a slave. If you really want to, you can go to the Lord and you too can get that figured out. If you really want to, because nothing's a force. Luke 16, 19 to the close. I'd love to one day give a th thorough um, expository on Luke 16, but that would take a week. And you've got to do some of this yourself. There was a certain rich man which, clothed, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Like I hope our, our enemies are, brethren. I, I really do. Uh, and you know, sumptuously. There is nothing wrong if you have it and you have comfort. But see, what our Lord is addressing are those who revel in it. Those who, John chapter 2, 1 John 2, 15 and 17, love not the world, none of the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, which the devil preys on, and so do you false people do. Okay? And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth ever. James 4. James 4. I'm saying that that way purposely, obviously. James 4, 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship, that the friendship of the world is, is eminent? Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You do a one day, a, and this may come, 
Do a word search in the scriptures on friend, friendly. Because what's the argument? Well, and this is how they justify sitting in front of a television for 10 hours a day. This is how they justify it. Well, I, I'm not worshiping it. Look up what worship means, okay? Worship. Worship, okay? Worship, okay? Worship. See, Rome makes you think of a certain thing of worship in only one sense. It's more than that. Friend. Well, I'm not a friend to the world. Who do you spend more time with? Well, I gotta make, I, yes. There's a brother from New Jersey who, when we speak, he's, he's like, you know, he, he, I talk to the Lord all the time. And he does. I know he does. He's a brother, meaning, like the fiddler on the roof, I, 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 maybe it does. He's the the brothers by himself up there, you know. Um, maybe he does talk audibly all day to the Lord. Most of you Christians would look at that dear brother. It's like you crazy, and he'd look at you. It's like I'm talking to my father. This is an A and B conversation. See your way out of it. <laughs> I had to. Okay. All right, but um, that well, what will they do to justify themselves? They'll swallow, they'll strain at the gnat and swallow the camel. That right there, too, can be a very good indicator of what spirit, lowercase s, you're dealing with when you're talking with someone. It's like when these uh, uh, free grace scumbags will go to Romans chapter 10 and they say, they don't, they don't deal with verse 14. It's, and they focus on the word believe, but then they ignore the entire sandwich uh, of it's like it's talking about those who are sent out to be ambassadors for Christ, you idiot. Okay, true cherry picking, but don't look at well, I'm not a friend scripturally. You know, man has perverted language. What our language says, a word, a word is to be used, or any other word, fine. When it comes to the language of the authorized version, that's a standard. So if your language uses a word that scripture uses in another way, which one is right? Does that mean we shouldn't? I'm not saying that. But see, our standard is here, the word. The word, the authorized version, okay? But friend, the world definition of a friend and what the Lord says is a friend are two different things. I have true friends. I really do. I have a true friend. I do. Proverbs 18, verse 24. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. Shew. Shoe. How many devils have that facade going and shoe themselves harmless, sensible, soft-spoken? Oh, the Englishmen. But underneath, they're, they're a toothless lion. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I have a brother that I'm related to by blood. And we have nothing, uh, uh, I actually don't care for him. And he doesn't care for me. That's fine. I understand that. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. What a friend we have in Jesus. But a brother, you have an actual blood brother. But yet a fellow saint will be there. Ought to be. If able. Not Cain. Okay. Proverbs 17, 17. Very interesting. Check this out. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. 
Think about that. A saint, a brother, uh, won't love you at all times. Think about it. The way you perceive love. A brother will love you and tell you truth because that is the standard. But see, a brother will not be a justifier of something that they know you shouldn't be doing according to school. Dear brethren who smoke, there are. Love them, love them dearly. They know where I stand on that. Okay? All right? That's between you and the Lord. Is that going to change our dynamic? No. I'll be disappointed if you go because you them cigarettes, of course. It's what killed my mother. Okay? Okay? <laughs> so, yeah, that, but I mean, no, all right? But see, you got a friend out there who, no matter what, is going to be, hey, don't worry about it, man. Hey, when a brother is like, hey, Brad, he's looking at porn. What's wrong with you? Get, get, get that stuff away from you. Get it away. Go to the Lord. Get what, what, what's wrong with you, man? Dude, you have a wife. What's your problem? Why are you doing that? But you see, you get someone who doesn't have the same father. See that tie-in? See, us saints, we have the same father. Do my brethren, my brethren, the four brethren that I would trust with my wife, okay? Are they, do they, the one brother, when I get angry, he's like, uh, Fred! The other brother, when I make mistakes, right there, it's like, come on, got a lesson time, okay. I can't watch those. At the last couple ones you've sent, we, we watched the one with the, the video, you know who we are. Uh, we watched that on, on Sue's phone. I, I, don't, I don't know why on uh, my phone. I can't, so just be aware. So if there's a lesson, let's do it over the phone, okay? So I'm just saying, if you can remember, write it down. Anyway, just saying, love you. Okay? But a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You know, when a brother and you are having adverse, adverse opinions, and the scripture settles it, okay? A brother doesn't like everything that I do. I don't like everything that the brethren do. They don't like everything that I do. There are several brethren out there that hate it when I get angry on this. And God bless them. You know, I, I do, brother. I, I, I do. Yeah, I, let my, I let things get the better, better of me, yes. But there are saints, brethren out there, it's like, you know, Brad, I love you, but you, you get... I've even had people go away who I believe are saints. It's like, you know, brother, I believe you're a saint. Oh, but you, you know, you get you get too angry sometimes. You're a little too uh, ultra aggressive. I've been called, <laughs> okay, ultra aggressive. Yeah. Well, see you up there, brother. It's like see you up there, okay. And if you keep watching videos, especially you start me ta uh, talking about Catholics, Jesuits, and stuff like that. <laughs> but anyway, not justified, okay. Anyway, the point is. There are those out there who will call you their friend, or you're, you're their friend, but yet when it comes to matters of truth, they won't do the painful thing and be truthful in love. You know, there's a difference between uh, one who is lo of love and friendship. True friendship is a side effect, if you will, of love. But then again, think about this. Love and lust, Amon and Tamar. See, someone who truly loves you will be willing to have those awkward, difficult conversations because of the love of the truth. Look up scripturally, friend. Back to Luke 16. And there, well, verse 20. 
And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 21 implies that Lazarus, okay, Lazarus wanted, he was a beggar. He was asking the rich guy for help. Verse 21 implies that the rich man, in Luke 18, verses 10 on to verse 14, you knew that was going to come, didn't you? Certain brother overseas, you knew that. 18, verses 10 on to verse 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, and the other a publican. Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee. I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Remember how they cast into their abundance and the widow and two mites? Yeah. I give tithes of all that I possess. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. See, the context of 20 and 21 also gives us the idea that he was a beggar, so obviously Lazarus reached out. But the rich guy, you know, purple, one of the colors of the Vatican, um, don't, it, it, it's a distraction job. Uh, the colors of the Vatican are purple and scarlet. Look at the processions of the cardinals and bishops. End of story, okay? But this is telling us that the rich man, I'm not, I thank thee, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Verse 12 in Luke 18. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And that publican, Lazarus, that wasn't his name, just a tie-in. And the publican standing afar off and would not and, eh, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes on the heaven. But smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Oh, that's good, Lord. That's good. That's good. That's, that's a good tie-in. That's a good tie-in. Yes. Verses 20 and 21 in Luke 16 again. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, giving us the picture that the rich man, James chapter 5, James chapter 5, <laughs> verses 5 and 6. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in the day of slaughter. Ye have condemned the, and killed the just. Literally, some of you. And he doth not resist you. And then, and then you sit there, you pompous, you, you think it's your deathbed. You, you, you sweet little sugar, you. You think that at your deathbed. Or if you, you, you think on your deathbed, you're going to get in by the skin of your teeth. Huh? You live a life serving the devil. And you think when you die, you're going to get in uh, on a uh, uh, deathbed confession. You, there's something else in them cigarettes you're smoking. Amos 5, verses 18 and 20. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? To you. No, for you. To what end is it for you? How many of these Christians who deceive themselves would just believe, or Catholicism, or, or um, Calvinism, or Baptistism, or whatever, they live their life justifying all of this 
and then they die, and then guess what, buddy? And I believe that there are going to be some, up, you know, that die thinking they're saved. They're really not. And then they end up at that great white throne of judgment. And by then, the shock, you would have had many years, at least a thousand, because the kingdom of heaven, you know, then the great white throne, okay? Can't even imagine that. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. <laughs> As if, and what do we to verse 20? As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Think about that. Our adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. But they get away from the lion and then what? A bear meets them. Or went into the house and leaned on and leaned his hand on the wall. Just chilling. I got time. I'm I'm okay. I just believe. Repentance is work. Just leaning on the wall. And a serpent bit him. Oh, the tie-ins there are delicious. That old devil, the serpent. Lightly, uh, what is that? Okay. Look at that. And leaned the, his hand on the wall. I got time. Procrastination. Because sentence against an evil work isn't executed speedily. And you think uh, when it matters the most, you're going to make it. Wow. Wow. Talk about being your own God. Wow. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? At Luke 16. And it came to pass, that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Abraham's bosom is where saints in the Old Testament times went before the death, burial, and resurrection, before the perfect sacrifice of sin for me was made. And the Lord went down and visited uh, spirits in prison uh, and said, Let's go! We're the, the way's open because... I paid the price, and we, we've talked about that before, okay? But the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus. The guy that we get the impression that he neglected to help. That he wouldn't help. Because he's the you know, Pharisee. I'm not going to help that guy. True. You give him a dollar, it might go for him to get him a bottle of booze. Why not you take the guy in your car and go get him what he needs and sit with him. Makes a better impression. And it's what the Lord would have us to do. But the deliciousness of that, of how the rich man, obviously, I believe, plainly we see, was like, mm, no, you know, with Lazarus. And now, while this man, the rich man, in hell, Looking up, uh, I believe hell, Abraham's bosom in the earth was here, okay? And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. 
But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, likewise evil things. And now he is comforted. Thou art tormented. Have your best life now there, devil. Live it up. Treat yourself to the finest. And, Mr. Andrew, and beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Matthew 18. Matthew 18, verses 8 and 9. 7 unto 9. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs that be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off, and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than... Rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Hell. <laughs> A atheist is more willing to believe in a reality or give credence to a thought of an heavenly abode rather than hell. Go figure. Why is that? Because Satan knows the permanence of it. Hell is not a purgatory for someone to change their mind so they can cross over and get into heaven. Okay? That is Richlingite doctrine. Okay? Okay, that's not even well-veiled. Catholicism, okay? That's not even well-veiled at all. I mean, it's veiled, but it's, it's like, that's, that's Catholic doctrine, okay? It's claiming that hell is a temporary thing for someone to change their mind and then get into heaven? Eh. Hey, two skunks get together trying to, uh, never mind, never mind. And see, and I heard people, it's like, all they say to us is, you'll find out at the end. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. See, because where are the atheists' eyes? Here and now. This is all they have. This is why, I, live it up. Live it up, that Tyson Gracie guy, that evolutionist guy. Um, you know, I, I, I am, I. Um, okay, brilliant. He going to hell, and by then... Mark 9, 43 out of verse 48. And now remember, the Lord is not meant talking about for you to literally go and mutilate yourself. Okay, we've talked about this plenty of times, but you know what? In this calling, I have to remind you, the Lord remind you of your destination if he don't save you. His way, not yours. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm, I believe, reference unto the soul, where their worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. You scrolling through those things, brother? I understand some of you only have a hell phone to watch videos on, that's fine. Um, moderation. Because I know! How easy is it? You see that, that cat video with the cat running into the wall or the little cat with the stubby legs going... <laughs> it's like, oh, 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 that's cute. Look at all, baby, isn't that so cute? She doesn't really like cats. It's like, oh, that's cute. And then the next thing you know, it's like... <laughs> Go put that in here. Leave it alone. Damn. Now get away from it. Because it's so simple. 
And that's how Satan gets you. He gives you the world for a moment of time. How? Shows you the kingdoms of the world at a high place. Moment of time. You can turn this off anytime you want. So if you're IFND, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Hmm? Or excuse me, their hand. Okay, what, what's your hand touching? Excuse me. But yeah, we'll get to that thing about the eye. Your hand. The keyboards. Hmm? The, the tablet or the cell phone. Someone who isn't your spouse. Filthy book. Hmm? Cut it off. Get, it, get away from it. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Where, where's your feet leading you? Your hands, what are they touching? Where are your feet leading you? Are you going to someone's, someplace you shouldn't? Are your feet trying to enjoy the broad way? Where are your feet taking you? And I've even encountered, well, I... You're missing the point. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter the halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Eternal torment in hell, the lake of fire. Because at the great white throne of judgment, Hell gets cast into the lake of fire. See, this is the thing. I've even encountered this. Well, hell will see. Hell will have an end. Uh, idiot. I'm being polite, too. Idiot. You're still burning for eternity. Lake of fire. Your soul does not get annihilated. You will burn in the lake of fire for eternity. Okay? Sure, you want to get you want to get that way and say, well see, hell has an end. Ye the lake of fire. In hell you're burning. We're reading about that in Luke 16. And it doesn't go out. You will be tormented. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And all that you will have to look forward to in hell is getting that moment before the great white throne and then going back to more eternal burning for eternity. You, this is where you're headed. By your own choice. For, for other those of you, it doesn't have to be that way. But, all things love for you. Do whatever you want. And if thine eye offend thee, look it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God, spiritual, with one eye, than having two hot two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not. Fire is not. What are you putting before your eyes? What are your hands touching? Where are your feet taking you? And what are you looking at? Luke 16, 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Verse 27 and 28 there, there ain't one person in hell. 
my mother, David, both Davids that I knew. I knew quite a few other Davids. You know? okay. Manly Palmer Hall, Billy Graham, and the list goes on and on. Kobe Bryant. There isn't a person in hell who wants to be there. And in hell, this gives us the idea that even someone in hell doesn't want someone they would care about to go there. Because he specifically mentioned his brethren, his brothers. And interesting, a brother born for adversity? Interesting. But anyway, he mentions his immediate family. Doesn't want you to be there with him. So the implication is that they're in hell, they can't get out, burning for eternity, and they don't want you there either. But yeah, look what is said here. Abraham saith unto them, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word. Truth. Ooh, that's that's good. We got the, the void for a reference, and um, oh, uh, free will. Free will. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Okay. But they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. You got the scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know your Romans 14, there, uh, 10, 14, uh, how will they hear without a preacher? You idiot. But see, how can these guys get away with that? Because people are, being, may, are ignorant willfully of the scriptures. So, the Lord's like saying, you know, the Lord who um, um, sanctified his word above thy name um, I, I always get hold on let's I want us to look at that that's in Psalm 138 I, I get that one confused with the number uh, Psalm 138 come on just really quickly Psalm 138 yes ha -ha! Psalm 138 1 and 2 I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods will I sing praise unto thee I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. In the description box, things about the word. Verse 29 in Luke 16. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Think you guys got the scriptures? Well, yea, hath God said, Shut up and go away. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, today we are we walk by faith, not by sight. Jews require a sign, huh? And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. It's like, you know, an atheist who's, you know, who admitted, you know, if the actual real Jesus Christ given to you in the authorized version were to appear in front of you, you wouldn't believe on him because you love yourself too much. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, if they won't hear the word, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. If he is the Mashiach, the Lord crucified, let him come down and we will believe him. They had the scripture. They had the, the, the Pharisees of the days of our Lord when in his first coming knew the Old Testament better probably than any of us will ever know. Okay? But they didn't believe it. They didn't really hear it. 
live by it or whatever. They lived by it, but they made their own thing. But they didn't believe it. And they didn't hear it. They didn't hear it. And so they're like, if he be the Messiah, if he be the Christ, let him come down. I will believe him. Again, if the Lord would have done, been like, oh, okay, here I am. Devil! And they would have stoned him to death. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. Are you an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished? The older you get, the harder it gets. It is not impossible. But the longer you put it off and the longer you deceive yourself, the harder for the genuine to come. Even though he's nigh all of us. Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. If they don't hear the scripture, who rose from the dead? Who lives in us? What do we got? And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat. He who trusteth in his heart is a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Talk about a fat heart. But make it fat also context by telling them the truth. Isn't that interesting? And make their ears heavy. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. And it's interesting because the more they hear the truth, the more they revert and revert and revert. I know in my heart that, you know, or the Lord knows my heart. Anybody says that. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, you're a Christian. You are a Christian. Goodbye. Okay. Lest and shut their eyes. So I, heart, ears, eyes. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Look at that. Heart, ears, pride of life. To hear the song of the fool. Ooh. And their eyes. He taketh him up into a pinnacle. And sheweth him the kingdoms of the world. <laughs> In a moment of time. And all this will I give to thee if you fall down and worship me. All will be thine. Lest they see with their eyes. And hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. And see, when you got someone who's justifying themselves, we the saint who make their heart fat, because when we're telling them the truth, they revert back. God, God knows my heart. Okay? And make their ears heavy. Brad, you're talking about the same thing. Yeah, I am. Have you not heard the scriptures before? Have you not heard the gospel before? I've already heard it. I don't want to hear it again. I'm sick of hearing it. Sick of hearing truth, huh? Here's heavy. I've heard it a thousand times. Yeah. And you think you can die at your deathbed and get it You're crazy. And shut their eyes. Ah, I don't have eyes to see. I don't see it your way. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. Because we as ambassadors of Christ, 
We have the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ within us, and the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of truth. Lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and convert. Unexpected video today. Um, Monday, Monday. I could upload this on Monday, you know. But uh, uh, Monday, there are things that we need to tend to. So there will not be a video on Monday. Um, I will probably upload this today, Sunday. Okay, Sunday. <laughs> but um, as at the beginning of this video, Keep us in the prayers, please. We need all the prayers we can get. Are you an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished? Come. Let's reason together, you and I. 